Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're doing probably the most requested video in the last nine months. It's all about how to deal with clay soils. Yes, that's right. We're here. So if you are one of the 70% of subscribers on this channel that have not hit that subscribe button yet, please do. I would greatly appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have a clay soil or what kind of soil you think you may have, whether or not you've tried to amend it, what has worked for you, what hasn't, and what your problem with your soil is because it helps me with video ideas and it also helps me curate my content just a bit better suited towards my actual subscribers because you guys are truly the ones that matter. Screw the other two-ish billion people that watch YouTube a day. I got the coolest 7,000 people in on the internet. Well, I think I do anyways. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a few different aspects of clay soil. So it might get a little bit long and I apologize for that, but that's just life. That's the way it's gonna be. First off, I'm gonna tell you how to test to ensure that you actually have a clay soil and not something else. Then I'm gonna tell you about what a problem clay soil looks like. So something that we actually can't fix and we may need to try a raised bed system with. And then what clays we can look at and actually determine whether or not they are fixable for lack of a better term. And then we're gonna get into exactly how to fix them and the science behind why some of these methods work. So put on your nerd hats, put on your trench coats or your lab coats, um, maybe your glasses if you have them, and let's just dive in deep. So first off, why is clay soil so bad? Why is everyone in a not about clay soil? And it's actually pretty simple concept. Clay soil does two things. The main thing is that it holds on to way too much moisture, which can cause an anaerobic environment, which is not good for microbes that cycle nutrients or get rid of pests or disease but it also isn't good for the plant roots, which also need some air exchange within the soil. The second issue is because it is so tightly knit, if we don't have proper aggregation or we don't have the proper systems in place to allow for clay aggregation, what ends up happening is we end up with a muck and that muck has no form and that muck ultimately can turn into a hard pan or some sort of compaction, which roots generally do not enjoy and thirdly maybe not as concerning to most but for a farm scenario or for a homesteading scenario or something on a slightly larger scale it is a concern and that is permeability so it is not a permeable system and therefore uh, water tends to sit on top either pooling or running off and when we get runoff we end up with topsoil loss that ends up into our rivers our lakes that's not good for the rivers or the lakes nor is it good for you and your garden because you need that topsoil is incredibly valuable to maintaining high yields so it's going to be very rare that you have a full blown clay soil this is very very rare you're going to have a variation of clay soil within this textual triangle and while you're not trained soil scientists, so you may not be able to pinpoint exactly where on the triangle you may be. There are some tests you can do to determine approximately where you may lie. First one being a palm test. You're just gonna put your soil into your palm with a couple drops of water and you're just gonna give it a nice massage. If you feel zero grains of sand, zero kind of knobbiness in that, then you may have a loam clay but if you feel slimy, it feels like almost like a soapy slime, then you may have full, full blown clay. Any sort of grit in there is going to push you farther and farther away from full blown clay and et cetera and so forth. The other test you can do is a ribbon test or a roll test. And that is again, taking some moistened soil, putting it in between your fingers. And all you're gonna do is push it out and you're gonna see how much of a ribbon you can get. If you can get over three inches, you are definitely have clay in your soil. If you can get over even those three inches and in, into four or five, the higher your clay content goes. So a really great way to know whether or not you can amend your soil is whether or not you have problematic clay. 
this isn't a technical term whatsoever. What you're looking for is you're looking for alluviation is what it's called. It's a very fancy word. It's essentially gray soil. This can come in the form of streaking. It can come in the form as an actual layer in your soil profile. It can come as blotching. All of these are examples of alluviation. The degree or the intensity of this alluviation is going to determine how poor that soil is when it comes to gardening or using this soil as, as viable land. What this is showing us is it's showing a buildup of iron, specifically ferric oxide. And so what, what we're looking for here is we're looking for gray soil. What happens in anaerobic environments or environments that don't have a lot of oxygen is we end up with microbes that enjoy anaerobic conditions that actually utilize iron in their system. And as they utilize this, they turn it into different forms that over time, because they are colorless um, byproducts, it does discolor the soil and it causes it to turn gray. Now, this is a sign that you have a very poor drainage, you have a high water table, and that just plants and roots in general will not do well in this area unless they're to some degree water resistant. They, they do okay in saturated areas. So a great place to actually find this gray soil would be along ponds, things of that nature. You're definitely gonna find that gray soil but um, you may find it in your garden system. So that's something to look for. If this is the case, if you find gray soil and you find enormous amounts of it, then you're going to want to probably do a raised bed system, something that's on the surface, maybe a no dig system, because there's really no purpose in utilizing that soil or trying to get a, a shallow bed going, mostly because it probably means your water table is too high or that the soil, the water's not draining through the system properly. So really almost anything you do won't amend it unless you're willing to spend a lot of cash to get it there. So your simplest, cheapest solution is actually going to be a rice bed or some sort of no dig garden. There are legitimate scientific fixes to clay soil. And there's three, in my mind there's three. Some are more expensive than others, but they all work kind of, well, no, they actually all kind of work a little bit differently technically, but they all do basically the same thing, but in different ways. The first method is using gypsum and specifically garden gypsum, which almost kind of looks like a perlite or a pumice or just a leka. It's little tiny balls or irregularly shaped rocks. and it specifically is calcium sulfate dihydrate is, is what it's called. So what you're going to do is you're just going to mix that into the soil at a rate of approximately one kilogram for every square meter to a depth of about 15 centimeters or where you think the root zone for a majority of your crops is going to lie. What this is going to do is because it is a rock that is not biological, so it doesn't decompose hugely easily you will you will end up with more air movement therefore you're going to have better root development you're going to have higher rates of evapotranspiration so the water is going to be leached out of the system um, evaporate out of the system a bit quicker your microbes are going to be much more happier because they're going to be aerobic microbes which are exactly the ones we want instead of the anaerobic ones that cause that gray soil so all around it does a great job the second amendment is lime. And so lime would be more of in a powdered format, preferably. And you can use all these, you can use in combination with each other because they each kind of serve their own purpose. But with the lime, again, you're going to have to mix it into the soil profile. In all of these with clay soil, you're gonna have to mix it in, you're gonna have to till. I'm sorry, that's the way it goes. You have to penetrate this system, there's no, fixing this above ground, literally zero. So lime has been studied in clay soils enormously. There's a ton of studies on this stuff. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to mix it into the soil. One major thing that the lime will do is it's going to raise that pH. It's gonna bring it out of that acidic zone and into the alkaline zone. Clay tends to be pretty acidic, mostly because of that anaerobic environment scenario, but it's going to raise that pH into a better 
range. Lime is also going to slowly fall, uh, form small aggregates. And so this aggregation is that clumping look that you get with soil. And this is ideal and I actually have some really awesome footage that I'm going to be doing a video with here in the very near future. I'm actually gonna film it tonight. I'm just not sure schedule wise when it's gonna come out on the YouTube yet, but I'm gonna show you what aggregation looks like. What lime does with clay is it takes it from this homogenous mixture and it turns it into little clumps or little balls. And so this little egg, this aggregation, this small aggregation, means that instead of the water going out and then slowly percolating through all these tiny little pore spaces, it's going to act more like a sand in a sense, where it's going to run through the system via gravity while also penetrating through capillary action into these small amendments or into these small aggregates. So two things are gonna happen. You're going to get deep, deeper water penetration. You're going to get uh, faster permeability. So you're not gonna end up with soil or water sitting on top of the soil, which can be runoff or pooling, which will suffocate your plants and your roots. You're gonna end up with more of a gravitational pull. But then because it's a small irrigation where you still have all those tiny little capillary pores within the clay, you actually will end up with um, higher moisture content or uh, moisture reserves because of all those tiny support pore spaces. And the third, probably the cheapest method is actually rototilling in a mulch. Now there is downfalls to this, one being the fact that it's going to uh, pull a lot of nutrients into the system and it's not going to let it go. It's really going to hold on to it pretty tightly. So there is that, but the benefit is that it's cheaper and that when it does eventually decompose, you're going to end up with air pockets and aggregation in that system, which again is going to act similar to the gypsum, but I would actually probably characterize it closer to the use of uh, taproot plants and using the root mass to kind of aggregate and fracture the clay soil. So using mulch um, in that system may work for you as well. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below. I wanted to do a very quick overview on clay soils. If there's any specific issues you are having with your clay soil, please let me know. I will do a video on those specific issues, but just as a quick baseline of what you can expect with the clay soil, how to amend it, if you can amend it or not, I hope this video did the trick. Thanks for watching. Bye.